You're listening to Leah's Gals. A Mind's Eye Podcast production. Leah's Gals contains mature content. Listener discretion is advised. Episode 2. The Price of Power. appreciate you seeing me home, Frankie. Yeah, no problem. So why, uh... I guess this is it. What... What do you mean, it? I... I mean... Goodbye. What? Are you... Are you breaking up with me? Of course I'm not breaking up with you. Then what are you talking about? You. Breaking up with me. I don't want to break up with you. Whatever put that idea in your head? Hell, Patty, I I wanna marry you. But But what? But what about today? What about it? Well, you heard all them words my mama said about me. About no man wanting nothing to do with me. About what a terrible person I am. That was my own mama saying that. With all due respect, Patty, I don't give a damn about what any other person on this entire earth thinks about you. Not your mama, not your pastor, no one. What I think about you is the only thing that matters. And I thank God each and every day that he let you walk into my life and made you love me just enough to let me show you just how much it is that I love you. But I ain't worth nothing. What the hell are you talking about? You're worth more than anything. I I never met no one in my life for now, worth loving and respecting and caring about as much as you. No one. Never. And it fair burns me up inside to hear you talking like that. No, I'm talking about money, Frankie. Money? Yes, Frankie, money. You can talk about love and what a nice person you think I am till you're blue in the face. But the fact is, it's money that makes this world go round. And the other fact is, Still a short time ago, your future wife could have been worth a whole lot of it. And right now, she ain't worth a nickel. And... And I understand, Frankie. Really, I do. I won't hold it against you, because... I'm the one that blew it. I'm the one to blame. Is that all this means to you? Is that what you think I am? You think I was into you because I smelled money? No, I'm just saying that... No. You said enough already. God damn it, Patty! You had next to nothing when I met you, you had next to nothing this morning when I got up, and you still have next to nothing now! What in the name of the Lord or Satan makes you think I'm gonna have different feelings for you now than I did a day ago? Or six months ago? Who do you think I am? Is that how you see me? As some kind of speculator waiting to see how much my stock's worth for deciding whether to trade? You got me wrong, Patty. You got me all wrong. Or maybe I got you wrong. You didn't get me wrong, Frankie. It's just... I don't know. I don't know what to think about people no more. It just seems to me that the more you speak from your heart and not your head, the more trouble you get yourself into. You tell people what you feel, and they don't like it. You tell people what you think they want to hear, what you calculate in your head to get what you want, and they'll be crawling all over you. Fact is, somewhere along the way, truth-telling became a liability. That ain't so, and don't you believe it, because you're dead wrong if you do. See, when I saw your sisters over there today carrying on like they was in a Soap opera gushing and fawning all over your mama like that, well, I gotta confess, it fair made me sick to my stomach. It's like watching a couple of dogs on their hind legs with your mama dangling a bone at them. They got their reasons, I guess. Don't take much reason to figure out what was on the top of their minds. 
But you... You were just... You. Beautiful you. Not taking no bait, not... Taking no bull, just... Telling the God's honest truth. And... Damn it, I couldn't have felt more proud. Oh, Frankie. I do love you so. And as for being rich... Hell, Patty. The day I met you, I was like a prospector hitting gold. Man, don't get much richer than I am right now. Oh, Frankie. Frankie. <clears throat> Frankie. What? What is it, honey? Nothing. Just... If you felt like kissing me right now, I guess it'd be okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right. Patty, I... I swear I feel like I'm living a dream with you. If you don't hurry up and make an honest man out of me, I'm gonna go clear out of my mind. Then... then let's do it! You mean now? Hell yeah! Right now? Right now! Then we just got one choice. Which is? Vegas, baby! Vegas? Do you think we can get a fake Elvis to do it? We'll get the best fake Elvis money can buy. Well, for under 50 bucks, that is. That could be a pretty ratty looking Elvis. He don't need no blue suede shoes, darling. Just a couple of rings in a prayer book. How are we gonna get there? In my truck, of course. That thing? Yep. Strap yourself in and get ready to shake, rattle, and roll! Whoopee! Come here. I guess the only thing left is for me to ask your mama for your hand. Wouldn't want to piss her off. Oh, no, don't be like that. She ain't so bad, really. I was just kidding. She ain't. Really. This world ain't been too good to her, Frankie. Not till now, at least. And... Sometimes she just sees herself a little bit bigger than what she really is. Ain't her fault. Maybe that's what got her through it all. Seeing herself as something bigger than what her life was making her feel like she was. Well, whatever the case, you're mine now. Unless you want to keep fighting. No. I surrender. Well, that was easy. I ain't easy. But I am yours. You won me over, fair and square. And where we're heading, it's when it takes all. Then I'm folding my cards and I'm cashing in my chips. Let's get going, Dreamboat. We got an appointment with the king! Woohoo! Holy crappers, Lise. Hate to be the one to tell you this, but you better be fixing to face your maker. Is that right? Seems to me the only thing I'm facing right now is a royal flush. <laughs> God dang it. And I swear I thought I had you that time. I don't know how you do it. You sure there ain't another deck of cards floating around here somewhere? Just the luck of the draw, Pearl. That's all it is. Maybe so. But it's where you're drawing from that's got me to wondering. Sour grapes ain't gonna get you no win in hand. So you better just keep on shuffling. Oh, I'm shuffling. I'm shuffling real good this time. <sighs> right. That shit's getting turned off for a start. Flamidia, honey. What? What in the world have you done to yourself? 
What do you mean, what have I done to myself? I got a makeover is what I got. Don't look like much of a makeover to me. Looks more like make-believe. Only just what it is I'm supposed to believe you are, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> what the hell do you know? Who asked you anyway? You let yourself go years ago, so your opinions ain't worth the bad breath that made them known. But honey, you look... You look like Cher. She looks like a man trying to look like Cher is what she looks like. You want to know something, Pearl? Now, why don't you sit down here and have a drop or two of fire water with us? Chlamydia sugar. <laughs> Believe me, that is the last thing I want to do right now. And I told you not to call me that no more. I'm only going by clams from now on. I know you did, honey, but it just don't sound right. I ain't used to it. And besides, it makes you sound like shellfish. Shellfish? And chlamydia is such a beautiful name. It's a goddamn disease is what it is. Oh, now don't be like that, honey. It only sounds like it is, that's all. Uh, uh, do you know what I've gone through because of that? Because of you? Do ya? But baby, it's what I had when I had you. The doctor said so. He diagnosed it and all. And I didn't know what it was, did I? But I did know it sounded just so pretty. So pretty. And so were you, Cupcake. So I figured, what the hell? Ain't nothing but a name anyway. <sighs> Whatever. You heard what I said. <sighs> Come to think of it, you've been acting like a cat with its tail stuck in a socket for the last couple of weeks now. Why don't you sit down here and tell me and Pearl all what's troubling you? You want to know what the problem is? All right. I'll tell you flat out right here and now what the goddamn problem is. You and that hanger on of yours, or whatever she is, that's what the problem is. You've done nothing but sit around and drink yourself stupid and treat this place like a third-rate casino since you got here. It's bad enough with you sticking your nose in where it ain't wanted all the time, let alone having your ugly old lesbian friend messing up the place and filling up our brand new garage with all her shit. Hey, that ain't shit. It's antiques, and it's all valuable. <laughs> not to me it ain't. To me it's just like you are. Old, not worth nothing, and in the way. And I want you gone. Chlamydia? Are my ears deceiving me? Not unless you quit cleaning them. I said I want her gone. Is that plain enough for you? But you can't just toss her out into the street. She ain't got nowhere else to go. <laughs> sure I can. But honey, you're talking about Pearl. Pearl's like a sister to me. Well, she ain't to me. And that's a shame. What with her being so loving of her sisters and all. <sighs> Look, I warned you about this time and time again, and you never took a blind bit of notice. I'm tired of her crap littering up the place. I'm sick of her sassing me every time she thinks I ain't listening. And I'm up to here with the way you two keep carrying on around here, acting like a couple of drunken old bar hags. Is this how a daughter speaks to her own mother? Have you forgotten who I am? Do I have to remind you that if it weren't for me, you wouldn't have no fancy place to mess up? If it weren't for my generosity, you'd still be shacked up in that double wide with that no good junky husband of yours. Mm. Well, it ain't your money now, and this ain't your house, and I'm the one who calls the shots round here. You. You viper. Listen, Mama, I just want to do what's best for you, that's all. A woman of your age shouldn't be living her life like it was some kind of wild party. With the little time you got left, you should be slowing it down and taking things easy. This woman ain't a good influence on you, you know that. And the sooner she's gone, the better. Then maybe we can fix up the summer house for you, put a nice big screen TV in there so you can spend your last days quietly, watching Oprah and QVC and making peace with yourself. It's what you deserve, Mama. You've had a colorful life. But all I want for you now is to have a dignified and respectable end. 
The only peace I got to make with myself right now is why I never listened to your daddy when he begged me on his hands and knees to get you aborted. <sighs> Probably would have stuck around a few more months if I had. Mama. Offered to pay me, too. Looking back, seems like I played a losing hand that day. Mama, if you just... Don't you mama me. <laughs> I'm only saying that you... You ain't no daughter of mine. You think I'm gonna accept charity from some creature that bites off the nipples when it's finished feeding? You must be out of your mind. <laughs> I never signed on to be your barmaid and her housemaid. Don't seem like you signed on for much of nothing. Your problem is you're still acting like you're the one ruling the roost, but you ain't. Things are different now, and you need to start acting your age and doing what you're told, because that torch has been passed already. What torch? I ain't passed no torch to no one. The only thing I let out of my grip is my money and my common sense. To think I listened to all your lies of love and devotion and let myself get taken in. All them sweet words spouting out of that festering sore you call a heart. All that syrup dribbling from your mouth was nothing but pus. By God, whatever Patina's faults, they sure do look small compared to the lying, thieving, money-grubbing little vulture I see before me now. God damn it, Leah. How could you have been so goddamn stupid? Sweet Lord above, if you're up there, let me ask just this one thing of you. Just one thing. Before I come up there and join you, and that's to strike this woman with cancer. Put a tumor in her, Lord, and let it keep growing and growing inside her, racking her body with pain and disease till she can't hardly stand it no more. And don't let it take her till nine months have passed. So she'll know what it was like for me with her. Funny, because I'd got to wondering lately about whether you was going senile. Guess I don't need to be wondering no more. Start packing, Pearl. Where are we going? I still got one daughter left to me. Someone who'll treat me with the respect I deserve. One that's still got a heart. What about all my antiques? Oh, my, my capital multi. I can't leave them here. Well, she's likely to take a match to them. Call you haul and tell them we need something yesterday. The sooner we get out of this rat's nest, the better off we'll be. No point in lingering on my account. Just you wait till I finish telling Zarconi about you and how you've been shitting on me. She is going to be fit to be tied. Yeah, well, that's her problem. And so will you be, too. Hey, babe, I think I'm... Pearl! Whoa! Who put a bug up their asses? I ain't seen them move that fast since they got here. Hmm. Well, you won't be seeing them move no more. Except out the front door. They're leaving. Oh. Cool. By the way, your sister called. Zarconia? Damn, I needed to speak to her and all. The other one? Patina? What the hell did she want? <sighs> Said she wanted to swing by here tomorrow with that new man of hers and see how her mama was doing. And why would she want to do that? Well, I don't know. Uh, maybe to see how her mama was doing? Don't try acting smart. It don't suit you. No, sir. And you told her mama don't want nothing more to do with her? Nope. You told her she ain't welcome here? Nope. You told her mama ain't living here no more? No. You goddamn imbecile! I didn't know she was leaving, did I? Hmm, <sighs> what the hell's she playing at? She's up to something, I know it. Probably sniffing around for some cash now she realizes just how bad she fucked up. Who knows? Well, anyway, I'm about to go horse riding. Care to join me? 
You do too much of that shit. Who cares? We can afford it. I can't afford it. Sure, baby. You're the queen bee, and I'm just a little worker. <laughs> I've never seen you do much of that in this life. What you talking about, honey? Getting happy these days takes a lot of work. A whole lot of work. Now, you sure you don't want to saddle up and join me? Yes. No. But I gotta call Zarconia first. Giddy up. This episode of Leah's Gals featured Hope Mercugliano, Caden Hobbs, Elizabeth Von Isser, Sarah Morsi, Ross Stanley, and Matt Raywalt. Leah's Gals is written, produced, edited, and directed by Andrew Bitts. This has been a Mind's Eye Podcast production. For more information, please visit mindseyepodcasts.com.